Welcome to class, everybody. Today we're going to cover lesson two about covalent bonding in our unit 2A. So one of the big ideas from unit 2A is to recognize the six most common elements that are used in organic molecules. Um, and one of the learning targets that we're going to use to get there is to just look at covalent bonding in order to build these molecules. We're going to talk in class about what you already know a little bit about chemical bonding, um, what they do and how they do it. So I'm going to go past that for now. Um, have you ever heard of valence electrons? Because all of the magic of bonding happens with these valence electrons. So let's just build that word down. Valence is something that's around, like around a window. If you ask your mom what a valence is, it's how you decorate your window. So it goes around. So think around when you think valence, because when we talk about valence electrons as chemists, we're talking about the electrons that are around the outside, the outermost um, electrons in the series. So at that level, electrons are either lost or gained or shared in order to make a bond. We're only going to talk about sharing today when we talk about covalent bonds. And I think Friday we're going to talk about lost or gained and how to make an ionic bond. But if you look at this illustration, you can see here that this calcium atom is going to lose two of its ions to chlorine. That's ionic. So this is what this looks like, all right, to form three separate ions. Today we're going to focus on the sharing part where you see the oxygen with the its we colored its electrons yellow, is sharing its yellow electron with the hydrogen. And likewise, the hydrogen is sharing its electron with the oxygen. When we, It's only happening at the outermost energy level or the valence around it. I want you to think from this point on about covalent bonds as a handshake. If you're going to make a deal with somebody because you need something, you're going to shake on it. And when you shake on it, you offer your hand and the other person provides their hand, not like this, but it's one to one and you shake on it. Now, if that shake stays physical, imagine that, right? So you guys can share those two hands between you in the shake. That's kind of like how a bond works, covalent bond, just an illustration. When two, elect when two atoms collide, it's the valence electrons that match first, and that's where these things happen. The number of valence electrons atoms have determine their properties. That's all stuff you're going to learn so much more about in chemistry, but for now, um, I'm just trying to get you through the basics of what you need for bio. So let's practice this. You're going to see this in class today. How many valence electrons do you see in boron, silicon, and anatomy? Okay, so I'm not talking about all the electrons total because boron here has five. One, two, three, four, five. Silicon has 14 and antimony has um, 51 and I'm not counting them all. But the only ones we care about when we think about binding are the ones that are orbiting in the outermost electron level, they call it. In other words, the outside most part of the atom. So boron, although it has five, Two of them are buried under these three, and those three are the three valence. Silicon has 14, but only four are on the outside. Antimony has 51, but only five of them are on the outside. So three, four, and five valence shell electrons. That's how you need to find that out. Why do you care? We'll get into that part. A chemical bond is a force that holds atoms together. So in this case, it is the physical, physical, sharing of an electron or or more so in this case these this is a, a covalent bond and this is an ionic so we're going to be focusing on covalent bonds today and how we can build from one atom or two atoms or three or four we can build great big molecules that we use for life okay there is going to be a movie that we're going to watch in class it is this link here you can, i don't know if i don't think you can get to it um, to the video, obviously. So it's going to be talking about this very random act of bonding. 
the whole premise of bonding who bonds to who and how and why is all based on a one group of the periodic table called the noble gas group. If you were to look at a periodic table, it is the farthest right table uh, column on the table, and there are very special el elements that exist in that column. They're the noble gases. We call them noble because they're kind of snooty. They're stuck up. They're royal. They don't interact, and they don't interact because they're content with a full outer energy level. And for them, that means eight electrons or two if it's helium. We're not going to get into that much detail on your test. I just want you to understand that a full balanced shell means everybody's happy. And if you have a full shell on your own, you never need to borrow from somebody else. We call that the octet rule, octet for eight, the rule of eight, happy with eight. Okay, or sometimes when you get to chem, they'll call it a noble gas configuration. Just remember a full valence shell is happy. There are two ways to do that. Like I showed you in that earlier picture, you, an atom can transfer electrons or gain electrons to get to eight. That's ionic. We're going to talk about that, but not today. Or they could come to an agreement that they're going to share electrons. If an, al an atom needs two more electrons, it can make one or two bonds with other atoms in order to reach eight. So we're going to focus on covalent, which is just sharing today. All right, so in a covalent bond, electrons are shared. Right? There are polar and there are nonpolar sharing. Um, I'll talk about them both today. But um, if you see this, all these little weird dots, count the dots around each atom. This carbon owns five, four of its own electrons in the valence shell only. And each hydrogen owns its own one. Well, remember, hydrogen and helium, they're happy with two. So this is the only special case you're going to have to remember. But then carbon needs eight. So look, two four, six, eight, four that it owns and four that it's borrowing or sharing. It's also sharing its four with four others. That's all covalent means. But sometimes it's not so pretty. If you picture tug of war, right? In this five-way tug of war with carbon in the middle, the hydrogens are pulling the, the carbons equally in each direction. It's geometrically equal, all right? And each of these hydrogens being the same atom, the pull is equal. The attraction to the shared electrons is equal. But if you look at phosphorus trichloride, there's not a fourth atom up here. So this is not an equal pull. Water is not an equal pull, but carbon dioxide is. It might be subtle to see, but look how the molecule is bent in water, and it's straight with carbon dioxide. This is a true tug of war. This is an unequal pull. The oxygen is stronger. Okay, so covalent bonds, in a nutshell, share their electrons. There's another video that I'm going to offer today in class. Types of covalent bonds, all right, nonpolar, which is what means equal. Um, nonpolar means all of the electrons are shared equally. It can look different ways, right? You can have just two in an equal sharing, three in an equal sharing, or many, 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 many. But the point is there are no empty spaces in this parking lot, okay? In other words, if you take this molecule and just look at the smaller version, all of the bonds are equally pulling on that carbon in the middle. And that's all you need to know. If I say it's nonpolar, that means there's no, there's it's, it's equal sharing and everybody's happy. But sometimes it's polar because not all sharing is equal. If you were to, if I were to go into tug of war, tug of war, that would be interesting. If I were to go into tug of war with um, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, I don't think I'm going to win. It would be fun, but I think I would lose fast because he's stronger than I am. So in that case, that's an unequal sharing. So think about that. Another way to think about it is partial custody. So let's say uh, two parents are no longer living together and they share their child. So sometimes the child goes to live with one parent, right? In the case of an electron, it's actually orbiting that electron's nucleus or atom's nucleus. And then sometimes that electron child goes and, and lives or orbits the other atom's nucleus. So it literally is just like partial custody. Now, if both parents share custody equally, then the same number of days each week, the child enjoys being at the other parent's home or the atom's nucleus, right? But sometimes one parent, for whatever reason, is more convenient, um, has custody of that child more often. So that child technically primarily lives with one parent. Or in this case, 
the case of chemistry, the atom that's the strongest pole has the electron more often. So the electron that's being shared between oxygen and hydrogen will most of the time be orbiting oxygen. And then, oops, sometimes hydrogen, oxygen, and then sometimes hydrogen. And likewise, that's happening on the other side. So you could say that the because the electron is most often around the oxygen and the oxygen doesn't have any more protons, that's when we look at the charges. Hydrogens are negative. Protons are positive. So if there are more negatives at any one time than there are positives, there's going to be an overall negative charge. So that's why we say that there are partial negative charges on the water molecule you see here because the electrons are more often, but not all the time, orbiting the oxygen atom. So when you look at this molecule in three-dimensional space, there is a region of this molecule that carries a negative charge, and there's a region of the molecule that carries a partial charge. Partial. Partial positive and partial negative. It might look like this in a larger molecule where that sharing is uneven. Instead of four hydrogens, the carbon is sharing with an oxygen and a hydrogen. So it's it's just disproportionate. Okay, the tug of war is not even. That's all you need to know. Why do we care? We care because as biologists, we study life and life processes. And um, what you need to understand is like charged particles dissolve like. So water, uh, and 75% oh, and of you and I are water. So we care how water behaves because water is weird. We're going to learn about water more specifically coming up, but water dissolves things that it ought not to. It boils and it freezes at temperatures that are not normal for its size. And it behaves in ways physically, physics, um, that it shouldn't. So we care because water is weird and we're 75% water, which means we're 75% weird by nature, okay? So we're gonna talk about how that affects biology um, as we go through the rest of this unit. All right, so the only thing that we're focusing on today is to understand how atoms can form covalent bonds and be able to diagram the interaction. What, I, what do I mean by that? If I ask you to diagram an interaction, I wanna see two atoms or more, and that the electrons between them are shared. So you'll see them smack in the middle, or you'll see them orbiting around each one, okay? You just have to be able to recognize that they're connected, like a handshake. So think about how you're feeling. You got it, you're almost there, you have a question. You're gonna, we're gonna talk about Quizlet today, very excited. All right, other than that, um, we're gonna finish the rest of this today in class. Thanks for your time.